There is a very interesting narrative of the Mayan culture from this southern part of Mexico. It's called the Epalchen. In this narrative of the Mayan culture, it says that the moon calls upon the first women on earth to climb the tallest tree. And there the moon will throw the silver threads for her to learn how to spin and weave. And then there the first women on earth would share the knowledge to daughters and granddaughters. And that's how the mythology comes of how we, we learned how to weave. And I think that's beautiful. Weaving, it's a little bit different because it's very sensorial. You are manipulating and transforming all the yarns to produce a piece. It's the weavers make the canvas as they go along. Like I say, it's like a creature that you are uh, giving birth to until you release it from the loom. It's giving life to a piece of art. I come from Mexico City, and it was there when I started actually learning how to do the, the serapes and all the traditional um, weaving. 16 years ago when I moved to Canada, the whirlwind of combination of an immersion into the First Nations, all the Canadian culture, of course has had an impact in my art. Being a global artist and having lived in several countries, I cannot ex escape from having influences from everywhere touching different traditions and cultures. When I was younger, I, we used to get together with my grandmother to do crochet and other crafts. And growing up, I was always uh, interested in fabrics. So I took a little bit of fashion design and pattern transformation and understanding the fabrics. But it was probably in high school when I started weaving in San Miguel Allende. I grew up with having available so many books in archeology span from my grandfather and my parents. And I was just blown away by the Mayan culture. Actually, my name is Mayan. Ixchel is the goddess of weaving, uh, fertility, and medicine in the Mayan culture. So I guess it was almost like a curse, <laughs> being able to be a weaver in my life. After that period, I saw the contemporary Polish art. And I was fascinated by all the abstraction and the use of different materials. It was just unbelievable how they, they would manage to do those formats and explore the textiles into off the loom. And I was always trying to put something else. I started putting shells, I started bringing um, threads, and probably that determined my wanting to explore more tapestry by uh, studying in Poland. Well, living in Poland gave me an opportunity, of, first of all, to know myself, because I had to First of all, live alone. Not only it was another culture, the weather, the time of the day, it was so dark, the um, possibilities of doing many things, you know, it was a transitional time. It was before the, the wall came down. So it was very interesting politically and socially. And for me, I think it was an internal exploration being alone, I was even sick for a while in Poland. So not everything was like um, a bed of roses, but I think if I had the opportunity, I would do it again. The good thing about the process of tapestry is a one-on-one. -on -one. It's the direct relationship with your hands, your mind, your eyes. And when I'm into it, it's a repetitive movement. It's like breathing. It's like listening to the beat of the heart. Tapestry allows me to find this, let's say, zen moment where I can explore myself, first of all, and meditative, mostly. Photography is a fascinating um, world. I grew up uh, having a dark room in the house with my dad and developing black and white and, you know, doing effects in the paper, uh, opening the grain, lowering the grain and taking pictures in 35 millimeters. That was fascinating. Nowadays, I can tell you that these digital technologies are fantastic. You know, I, can, I have been doing so many compositions with my cell phone. I see uh, something that catches my attention in, in the road we're walking in a piece of dust or in a nest or in a bark. I started trying to make this association of the 
repeated way that we weave, immersed in a, in a world that it's ever changing, you know? It's just capturing the moment and seeing how I can explore that into textures. But I explore anything that could be turned into texture. And I wanted to, to take part of capturing moments and capturing essential parts and fragments of nature to bring them alive through textures. And it has taken me almost 20 years to get to the point that I'm in right now. But I think this is the, the most um, true moment of my life when I relate to nature, photography, music, and tapestry. I found this moment that it really, really fulfills my way of understanding my life as a mature woman, experiencing uh, having lived in four different countries and exploring another medium with photography and now taking that as a platform to explore it through, through textures and tapestry. Uh, tapestry for me has been uh, the most important thing to develop as, as a process, as a life partner, as um, a companion, and as a way to project my life in the future. But also because I think I found in tapestry the way to communicate more what I want to say. It's a very intricate way to explore one's life. It's a language, it's a communication, it's a way of existing. And what I love about joining photography with tapestry is precisely the way that we don't see the world anymore. You know, we're used to uh, fast technologies. Everything, we live in a fast world, fast track. We switch the, the screen and we want an instant gratification. And tapestry doesn't do that. Tapestry forces you to put the brakes a little bit down in your overwhelming life and say, listen, this is more important. You have to take a time to do your art. You have to take a time to meditate and to produce and to communicate at other levels, especially now. Working in tapestry has allowed me to express many different emotions and times of my life. And it was probably seven years ago when I had a, a very important event in my life, a separation after 25 years of marriage. This conditioned everything I was uh, doing uh, uh, until that point. It was a turning point in my career. One of the tapestries that reflect more the, the starting of this period, I think it was Scars from Nature, where it was at the beginning in a trip I was having with my kids. And my daughter helped me take some photographs and I realized when I started weaving it, because it was the period of time I was going through, that and after that, I, there was a series of tapestries that were really, really deep for me and meant a lot. Other of the series of the Natura Textura was maple bark. That tapestry was also very much influenced with the black yarns and the black uh, emptiness of the shading not so much texture, but more into the repeated, repeated sense of motion of the design itself. It's one of my favorite tapestries of this period. The repeated patterns uh, have been a constant thing in my, in my tapestries. Memories of a Birch Tree was a very interesting project for me. Um, I was really obsessed in weaving at that time. Probably it was my escape in my, my time frame I was working. And it was interesting because it was for the first time I was able to weave with two other of my, my friend weavers to produce a tapestry. We were under a timeline for an exhibition and Memories of a Birch Tree really, really changed the way I saw tapestry. For me, tapestry was a one-on-one -on -one, and it still is. But working with other weavers, and exploring the, the sense of collaborating, integrating a community, and having the same language, interpreting in different, uh, different times, it was really, really important for me to see the development of the memories of a birch tree. It started in winter, well, at the end of the fall, when I started noticing these beautiful white trees. And 
parks coming out and how they they change in all the seasons um, making this high contrast with the colors of the leaves and suddenly comes winter and yet even if it was all white they would still stand out so for me a birch tree became like a, a focal point for interesting shots and we used every single kind of thread for that project and at the end it i think it had very good results i think there's a lot to learn from this this medium that people don't even know as a way to to teach and pass on to knowledge of this medium and i think it's the time to sit and say this is who i am this is what i do and it's a big responsibility but this is what i have been set to do but i think weaving has a vast possibility to develop many different different areas not only for art itself but also for healing for mental health for senior homes you know weaving is a it gives you immense possibilities to translate into well-being and what i've seen throughout these almost 40 years of teaching is that more and more we find disconnected social structures uh, as family, as neighborhoods, as countries. Uh, we're not connecting. We're not connecting to, to each other. The common thread nowadays is technology. We have to be aware of that and we have to be able to be more human, more organic. We need the sense of going back to being human again. And the closest thing of being human is what is wrapped around us. Textiles are amazing because they bring all the sensorial parts of our past and our memories from our childhood. We are growing and we are always wrapped in threads. We don't realize that. We have to acknowledge that not everything can be cold with technology. I think, for me, it made sense to have capture of a moment in a second, exploring detail, very, very, very close detail, or things we really tend to give for granted. We go walking a sidewalk and we don't even notice the cracks of the street. Everything is looking fast, turning around fast. And we live in a moment that we really need to stop. We really need to stop and observe. We need to analyze. We need to give ourselves time to digest, to study the essence uh, of things, to see deep into our center core. And then you go back and analyze it and then you transfer that into another medium. And it grows slow, and at the end, you have a tapestry with all the emotions that that can bring. So a tapestry, if it takes me three, four months to do, it will have all those different emotions that would be captured in that period of time. Whereas a photograph is just one, one shot, and you have to put those, those mediums together, and that's fascinating. Today I find myself in a very interesting position. My kids flown away from the nest. I have more time to dedicate to the tapestry, that, which is my medium. And the, the projects of bringing alive the Canadian Tapestry and Texture Center, which was an initiative that we had um, almost three years ago, it's exploring the way we can preserve the technique and show this wonderful medium to at large in the community. So we really want to expand this. And for me, it's an opportunity not only to continue my art and my craft, but also to develop ways to share it and spread it in, in our communities and around the world. My name is Ixchel Suarez, and I'm a textile artist and a tapestry weaver. Art for me is the way we live, the way we breathe, and the way we experience life.